Does machine learning jeopardize lifelong learning? To answer this question, this video will observe four main movements. First, an introduction of the concepts at play. Second, a demonstration of ChatGPT's capabilities. Third, a thematic conclusion. And fourth, resources to guide our next steps. There's actually a document that organizes all of these resources, but if you're on YouTube, you can find the resources in the description below. Ultimately, our biggest challenge is that, thanks to ChatGPT, students are tempted to outsource their creativity and critical thinking out to AI. For Christian educators, there's perhaps no more formative text on the importance of creation and creativity than Genesis 1 and 2, which document the creation of mankind and the world. There are two truths that are particularly helpful in this conversation about creativity. The first being, God himself created things. Psalm 8 is our reference. It's good for us to rest in God's creation. It is good for us to consider the heavens, the works of God's fingers, the moon and stars which he hung in place. In truth, to survey creation is to draw nearer to God. It's worshipful. The second truth, human beings ourselves are created things. Put one way, creation is what makes us human. We were literally created. But creativity is also an expression of our humanity. God intends and has even modeled creativity to be reflective, loving, and a formative process. In Genesis 1, he saw that the earth was formless and void, so he developed a plan to respond with creation. He labored over his creation, and then, once finished, he reflected on his work, remarking that each aspect was good. Even a bird in making a nest follows the precedent set in Genesis 1. Until the bird fashions its nest, its home is formless and void. And to the degree that the bird plans and labors, this home can be an expression of love. Human beings create as well. We unknot our thoughts, draft our thoughts, and reflect on the things that we have made. But what happens when we outsource our intellectual planning, labor, and reflection? Here's why you shouldn't cheat. You guys right now are constructing the person you're going to be for the rest of your life. Um, human behavior is mostly a matter of habits. People talk as if you make big decisions all the time about what to do, but that's not true. Almost all the time, you just do what you're in the habit of doing. To connect Professor Harvey's thoughts to Psalm 1, David warns us that our choices shape us. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. The Bible Project points out that Psalm 1 charts the progression of a person becoming progressively sedentary. First, they are walking, then they are standing, then they are sitting. Notice, too, how there's an additional progression. At first, the counsel is wicked. A wicked person is someone who does not know right from wrong. But more than the wicked, sinners have acted out on what is wrong. And finally, scoffers double down on sin, mocking the righteous and aligning even more so with wrongdoing. All this to say, our habits, though we'd like to think otherwise, play a large role in shaping the people we become. Returning to our essential question, does machine learning jeopardize lifelong learning? It doesn't present like it would. Our students may just lean on artificial intelligence for help with ideation and brainstorming. But oh how quickly that can progress to relying on AI to generate our answers. Even more troubling is the student who full sale outsources all of their critical thought out to AI. This is not something that we can wish away. Our students are already wrestling with AI and so it's our duty as teachers to wrestle with the implications of AI. AI drastically changes the way we teach every discipline. It affects the humanities, it affects STEM, it affects foreign language, the arts, and so much more. Fundamentally, it changes the viability of homework. And also, it impacts take-home projects and papers as well. Here's just a brief example of AI's current capabilities. In this example, 
We're going to enlist ChatGPT to help with a science project, math homework, and an English essay. First, let's say that a science teacher assigned a project where students are building a terrarium. ChatGPT can help students brainstorm. So let's say that the student uses this information. Uh, it uses either mosses or ferns based off of ChatGPT's recommendation to fill their terrarium. Well now, how much of the terrarium is the student's idea and how much of the terrarium is the AI's idea? This is kind of the muddy territory we're entering in. Um, as I'm entering the second thing, math homework here, um, it's a math equation about imaginary numbers. And watch how quickly it's able to crunch out this math problem. I've asked it to show its work so that a student could submit this as homework without having learned any of the concepts. And as a teacher, it's impossibly difficult to differentiate between whether this was student generated or computer generated. And lastly, I'm gonna have the AI construct a paragraph that relates racism to the volcano monster in Moana. Um, and some teachers contend that, well, why don't we just personalize our prompts? But you can actually put that prompt into ChatGPT. So as an Asian American, I might wanna focus in on the Asian American experience. I want ChatGPT to use the I pronoun. And I also can even incorporate a quote from class. So say John Doe in class said, Asian Americans experience subtle racism, but microaggressions are just as dehumanizing as blunt force trauma. I can enter that in and in what would take a student maybe 15 to 30 minutes to construct their own paragraph, ChatGPT is able to construct a passable paragraph in 30 to 15 seconds. So does machine learning jeopardize lifelong learning? Recall that it is a tool with great promise, but it also can be a slippery slope as assistants can turn into codependents which can turn into unmitigated plagiarism. Paulo Freer's Pedagogy of the Oppressed helps to frame the situation with the proper urgency. Dehumanization, which marks not only those whose humanity has been stolen, but also, though in a different way, those who have stolen it, is a distortion of the vocation of becoming more fully human. Which is to say that technology used wrong is dehumanizing because it distorts the practice of being fully human. Hollywood has devoted many movies to attest to as much. Think to movies like The Matrix, The Terminator, 2001's A Space Odyssey, Blade Runner, Ex Machina, and WALL-E. The main fear that our movies have named is a fear that technology threatens to become human. But there is an equal, if not more troubling fear that cannot be ignored. Technology threatens to dehumanize us. Which leads us to the close of this video. I've hopefully made it abundantly clear that AI is just as perilous as it is promising. Each year we remain in the profession, we grow older, while in contrast, our ever-replenishing student body remains the exact same age. Yes, AI is as perilous as it is promising, but it is also as promising as it is perilous. I don't think we educators are to ban ChatGPT or to ban artificial intelligence from our classrooms. We're not protecting the Garden of Eden with a fending off technology, get off my lawn mindset. Really, as teachers, we need to teach students about right and wrong, what ways we should use technology and which ways we shouldn't, about the ways it can be fundamentally shaping of our habits. There's perhaps no better way to do this than to apply the tech to our own work. Because ChatGPT is not just a tool for students. ChatGPT is a tool for teachers. Artificial intelligence can help us to build rubrics, differentiate content, produce subplans, grade tests, serve as a tutor, lesson plan, and create student models. Of course, we too are posed with the same questions that we pose to our students. If any of these topics pique your interest, I've provided a brief tutorial video in the description of this video. As our relationship with AI starts to take shape and we define the things that AI can do, 
will be better posed to answer the more pressing question of what AI should do.